Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. Today I'm going to be unboxing this Gigabyte Aorus X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. The name is a handful and it has a lot of features. This is not necessarily a new motherboard, it's been around for around three years and it does have the X570 chipset so it's more capable than things like the A520, the B450 and the B550. But these boards are generally quite expensive. Now being an old board, there's some great deals on this at the moment. I think I paid around 135 uh, from CCL online in the UK, 135 pounds that is. And the other option was the A520. And what I noticed was there were some features which were missing in the A520. Now it's, it's not a bad thing by the way, there's, there's definitely uh, enough capability in that board to run something like this 5600G. And the reason I've got this processor here is, is it good to pair a 5600G with the X570 knowing that the 5600G, which has a built-in graphics card, does not necessarily have uh, PCIe 4 support. So this motherboard is built for PCIe 4, it has Wi-Fi 6, so let's go through the board anyway and then we'll talk about all of that and how the, why this is maybe a better option for future proofing, though I know we're coming to the end of AM4. So first let's open the box and see what we have inside. And we're presented with the motherboard. What's nice about this unboxing, I mean I haven't done lots of motherboard unboxings but it's really nice the way they've inset this uh, motherboard inside this foam so if we just pick this up all the cables are underneath usually when you're taking out a new motherboard you get like a cardboard and you open the cardboard up and it doesn't look very nice but this one actually looks quite cool the way they've done it so let's have a look what's inside anyway so we've got two SATA cables one right angle one flat some reason that seems to be the new trend. Uh, we have a Wi-Fi antenna. I believe this looks like a yeah, 12 volt. I'm not sure if you can see that through the package. I'm not gonna bother opening it because I'm not gonna use it, but it's a 12 volt RGB extension cable by the look of it. There is a M.2 thermal pad. I'm guessing that underneath the heat sink we'll see at the moment there may not be one already applied or maybe it's a spare. Bedtime reading, some more bedtime reading, oh that's a thick sticker that is, it's a nice Aorus logo there if you want to ruin your case or maybe you like those stickers. Oh something slipped out, this must be the most magical item in the box, a CD-ROM drive, well not drive, disc for drivers, how cool is that, they still exist. And then of course we have the motherboard manual. So I'm sure this won't be bedtime reading. This will be more useful information about everything your motherboard supports, what the fan headers can support, how much voltage they can support. So this is not bedtime reading. And I always say manuals are bedtime reading. Uh, where motherboards are concerned, I mean, I know you can download the manuals online, but I do think it's important for the specific, for, for, to make sure you're using the motherboard correctly to refer to the manual. So anyway, let's put all of this stuff back inside. Probably shouldn't waste time doing this on camera, but because there's not much, I can do it very quickly. So I will be building, like I said, the system with the Ryzen 5 5600G. And um, I chose this motherboard purely because the price was good for the chipset features. And it allows for future upgradability if I want to make it into a more complete computer system with a powerful graphics card or something like that. So let's just take this out for now. And let's get rid of the box. It's quite heavy for an ITX board. Get rid of that tape. No trusty kitchen knife today. Some of you may be missing him. Okay, and here is the board. Let me just zoom in a little bit. I hope, I'm trying to record uh, in a different place today, hoping that I don't mess up the focusing like I did on my Z690 video. If you haven't seen that, feel free to check it out. I think it was still helpful to a lot of people, so I left it as it was, because naturally once the motherboard was installed, game over. I can't do that video again unless I undo everything. Anyway, long story short, but for now, um, this is the X570i, and it's a very nice looking motherboard. It has reinforced PCIe, connector, 
It's got all the usual pins. It's got RGB support and ARGB support. I believe this here, if I'm not wrong, that's the RGB connector right there. And then there is also an ARGB connector from what I remember. Just trying to see where that is. Um, ah, there it is, the D underscore LED on this side here. So that one there is the ARGB connector as we usually call it. It's called DLED on here. It's got nice reinforced DDR4 um, slots, four SATA slots, a USB 3 header. This I believe is a USB 2 header. We have a fan here. This is system fan one. And then we have a connector up here for the CPU fan and we have an eight pin power connector for the processor. It's strange that this port is ex exposed because I love, when I did the build for Z690, I just realized and I can't even remember what the uh, last year's Ryzen motherboard was like. Maybe you can have a look at the video, but uh, there's nothing covering or protecting that uh, CPU socket. So anyway, we have the, is this 24 pin or 20 pin? 24 pin, I believe, power connector here. And then we have this little heat sink. This heat sink and fan has two functions. One is for uh, cooling the SSD. And the other reason why there is a fan here for the chipset heat sink is because the X570 is actually, um, it can't be cooled so efficiently when it's under load or something. I'm not sure exactly what the reasons are. But if you buy the newer version, if you buy the X570S, it will not have this fan. Right, so if, you, if this fan bothers you, and from reports I've read, you know, in most normal use, you can't even see that fan running or hearing. Uh, it doesn't really make that much noise and probably won't bother most people. So underneath this, we've got a PCIe slot. And it would be rude at this point not to see how it looks underneath. So let me just see, do we need to remove both of these screws? Got my little screwdriver here. Can you see that clearly? Yeah, okay, so let's just open this up. I believe we need to remove the two screws. Doesn't seem to be in straight, it's a bit wonky. Oh, lost focus again, look, I did it again. Okay, there's a nice big screw there. Right, so let's just get rid of this screw. Now, once you remove this, be careful because there is a fan connector there, as you can see, right? So make sure you don't just yank it up. So let's move that away. And there you can see the nice little fan and you can see space for the M.2 SSD. So you can see here that there is no heat sink applied. Uh, now I'm wondering, how do we apply the heat sink? Will it, will it not block the fan? Strange setup. So if we put this down, essentially it will cover the Assuming we put it at the top of the SSD, or maybe this one we don't actually use the thermal pad. I'm not sure. We'll see when I do the build video. Feel free to check it out, see how we put that in. But at least we know what it looks like inside now. So let's just screw that back in. Screws it back in. Um, so let's have a look at the back side of the board before we have a look at the I.O. So here is the back side of the board. And on the back side, we have another M.2 store and this very nice metal black back plate. So this is another M.2 store. Now from what I know, and let me know if I'm wrong in the comments, but what I, from what I understand, at least from what I remember back in the day, the X570 PCIe slots, if there's two of them, they would both be PCIe 4. So what's nice about this board is, without having to worry about having any other external drives, even if you're only gonna be using it as a basic PC or whatever, and you want more storage, you just need to connect one M.2 here and one at the front, and you're ready to go. You've got two drives. You can have two four terabyte drives if you want, for example. But it just, it's just nice to have a second slot, and moreover, the PCIe uh, Gen 4 support. So now let's go through the I.O. So for processors which have an onboard graphics card, we'll be able to make use of these, on, uh, these I.O panel display connectors. So we have a display port connector, HDMI and HDMI. Then we have one, two, three 
USB 3 connectors. That is also a USB 3.0. You can probably read that. But the reason why it's white is because here it says BIOS. So I believe uh, we can do a BIOS flashback with the use of this button. So this is really cool because this motherboard, as we saw in the box, I'll show you again in a second. Uh, the motherboard box actually says Ryzen 3000. Now, if I have an old version of the board, this could be old stock that's been lying around. Maybe they're trying to clear it. Maybe that's why it's reduced in price at the moment because we are coming up to AM5. But if I were to put my Ryzen 5 5600G, it may not work if the board revision is old. We'll check the revision in a moment. Then we have a USB 3.1 Type-C. Now, these, these naming conventions. So, USB 3.1 Type-C. It doesn't really tell me if it's a 10 gigabit port or not. Because these naming conventions are really weird and nowadays there is no USB 3.1, we now have USB 3.2, but I would assume for now, we'll check the spec again in a second, that this is a 10 gigabits port and this is also a 10 gigabits port. And then we have a gigabit LAN port. It's not 2.5, unfortunately, but that's fine. It is a three year old motherboard. It has the Wi Fi antennas there. So remember, this is Wi Fi 6 AX200 or 201. And then we have the audio outputs. So that's about it for this board. Now, why have I chosen to pair that with a 5600G? So if you're thinking about doing something similar, you know, that. It definitely is, in my opinion, not the most logical uh, pairing to pair the X570 with a 5600G. And I'll tell you why. The 5600G only has PCIe Gen 3 support. So this PCIe Gen 4 slot will function at PCIe Gen 3. In today's day and age, it's not a big deal. Even if you look at the comparisons with the RTX 30 series, if you use a PCIe Gen 4 slot or a PCIe Gen 3 slot, there's not a massive amount of difference in performance. What that does mean is if you go with the Ryzen 5600G for now to do some casual gaming, it will be fine to later on upgrade to an RTX 30 or 40 series when they finally come out or an AMD graphics card um, and still get PCIe Gen 3 speeds, which should still give you relatively good performance. Or you could even go with something like an RTX 2060 and get uh, PCIe 3 native uh, compatibility and still get a fairly decent performance because that, that card is still really good. And if you're going to be going with a 5600G, uh, no doubt you're looking for a more budget oriented approach, which means it might be, there are some good deals flying around on those RTX 2060s right now. So it could be the more logical pairing uh, with a Ryzen 5 processor, especially without that PCIe um, Gen 4 support. So the next point to mention is that the PCIe slots, will they still function at PCIe 4 speeds? Well, theoretically they should, because as far as I remember, the X570 chipset has support itself for PCIe Gen 4. So usually the PCIe Gen 4 lanes available on a computer is based on the chipset plus what the CPU can support. Now I can't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, so I'm not going to uh, try and tell you what they are, but let me just quickly grab the box and see if we can find that information. But I will put a link to the full specifications uh, in the in the description. But just let's have a quick look again at the box. I don't believe it says here. So it's got one PCI Gen 4 slash 3. No, so it doesn't mention exactly what it is but that's fine I'll, I'll put a link and you can check out exactly what pci lanes are supported uh, using the link in the description where you can get all of the detailed information about that so i will be doing a build uh, using this processor and this motherboard if you're going to be doing a build with this you know you could use the a520 and again the difference between the a520 is that you will not get uh, wi-fi 6 the a520 iac also by gigabyte uh, where you will not get Wi-Fi 6, you will have Wi-Fi 5, which is still fine, if that's okay with you, and it's perfectly fine. You know, even I don't really use Wi-Fi 6 on most of my devices, so Wi-Fi 5 is still perfectly fine, especially if you don't have a Wi-Fi 6 router. Of course, Wi-Fi 6 is more future-proof. And then the uh, other thing is that I can't remember the VRM uh, spec, but I believe the VRM spec is higher on here. We have a nice big heatsink. Even the A520 does have a nice heatsink for the Gigabyte model at least. And 
Then we have uh, the PCIe 4 support. So I believe the A520. Yeah, so I just had a quick look at the uh, website. The A520 chipset um, does not have uh, PCIe 4 at all. The PCIe, the M.2 and the PCIe slot is all PCIe 3. Now, you might be wondering, why am I not comparing this to the B550? Well, because I'm talking about the Ryzen 5 5600G. The B550 motherboard at the moment retails for more than the X570 motherboard, at least for the ITX form factor. Remember, this is important to remember. We're just talking about an ITX build here. I'm not trying to compare any, any other build size. You know, there might be more of a comparable motherboards uh, on the X570 and ATX style form factor. So the main thing we're concerned about here is, uh, you know, what are the features of, for a processor like this, a, a, a mid-range processor with a graphics card built in, uh, should you go for the X570, the B550 or the A520? In my opinion, uh, considering the price of this right now, I know the B550 is newer with some uh, different features, but the X570 is a fully featured AM4 motherboard, right? So considering the price, it makes sense to opt for the X570. The X570SI, which is the newer version of this motherboard, is like, you know, 50% to 75% more than this model, which is fine because it's a new motherboard and it's a more capable chip. It's not actually a much more, I think the feature-wise it's the same. It's just, it's just fanless, so it's a bit more efficient. Um, but that's about it. So I hope that is useful for anybody who's looking to you know, buy the X570 in 2022, a three-year-old motherboard. It's like I said, still a very capable motherboard. Um, and pair it with something like the Ryzen 5 5700G or 5600G. I personally chose the 5600G because I didn't see much performance gain uh, from 5700G and 5600G, at least for gaming. And I won't even be using it for gaming. So it's just going to be like, a, you could say HTPC, or maybe I might play with the, try and make my own NAS at home. So that's one of the main reasons I've got this. I've got a couple of different ITS cases. So feel free to check out the build video. If you have any questions, please do feel free to ask. In the meantime, please feel free to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.